Babito nini in the chicken kini me go me no arch me no mina kang and doon chipa. This is aga eggening into Nokia. No winda pe tenda no o get a Nokia win and none to she come on o Jiboy moin, the Manisha among o Jiboy moin. When you think about language, Ojibwe language, many things happen in that, that process of learning. And being a second language speaker, I didn't grow up with it, um, I can attest to the power of that experience. And the language is a transformative tool into an identity that makes us uniquely Anishinaabe. I've seen a lot of people, and myself included, earlier uh, in our lives where we make decisions and we do things and we wonder about who we are and where we belong and what we should be doing. And that language is a centering piece, is a ballast that brings you back on track and helps chart a course for your life. When you don't know that you're missing something and then you find what it is that you're missing, you just feel whole. I guess that's a good way to describe it. And that's how I feel. One of our teachers years ago had told us that Anishinaabe are like the manumen, like rice. Sometimes when you go, you knock rice, you find these empty hulls. And he said, that's like the, the person that needs to know their language. And the ones that are full, that's Anishinaabe who has their language is learning their culture. And it's by no fault of our own that a lot of us don't know, and we're still learning. I believe, and I, and our community believes, that language and culture will lead to well-being. Um, that language and culture can improve how, how we view ourselves, and that in turn will change the way we, or improve the way that we take care of ourselves. Our self-sufficiency depends on us knowing ourselves as a person, as an Anishinaabe person. And so what we're giving is we're giving families an opportunity to have this information and to be able to utilize it so that they can um, become self-sufficient. It's not just language. I think it sort of requires a, a new lifestyle. So when you, when you get into this kind of stuff, if you work at the school or you, you work on these kind of projects, you're surrounded by healthy people. You're surrounded by people who who care about the same kind of things that you care about. It kind of guides you, right? And our, our spiritual belief is each one of us has a path that's put, put in front of us. Whenever we step off that path, life is hard. But if we stay on that path and we keep moving on that path, things work out beautifully for us. That sort of positive lifestyle that comes from learning your language, it, it does something to you, you know, identity-wise, and um, who you are and how you carry yourself. And we don't have to teach people to respect things because it's it's already ingrained and in the language it's already ingrained in our spiritual beliefs. I've seen it turn lives around um, and heard stories of people's lives in the past and seeing them now in their positions that they're in now and thinking it must have been language, it must have been our ceremonies, it must have been our spirituality. I've been fortunate in the last 30 years to study language and to have that language as part of my daily life for work. But it isn't just about language, I'm finding out. It's about living, and it's about living in a healthy way. When you have people who have been generationally oppressed and are living in poverty, it's a tremendous challenge for a government or for any community to move through that if we're not giving people the tools that they need to process that. At a very basic level, language learning and giving people an opportunity to experience who they really are and give them the tools to interpret their natural world and to interpret their kinship and to interpret their, I would say, their families. If we're not giving them that opportunity, it, and then we sit on the side and scratch your head and wonder why we have so many social problems that we're trying to solve. It just, it really doesn't make sense. And so this makes sense. Giving people access and opportunity to who they, to tap into who they are, makes the most sense for well-being.
I teach kindergarten and I see with my students, they come in, many of them have parents that are interested and maybe are learning some Ojibwe at home from their families. But a lot of them, it's something new and something where their parents feel like maybe they missed having and they want their children to have it. And at first, like the first couple weeks of school, students are nervous and shy and they don't really want to be using the language. And then suddenly something happens, something like clicks for them and they're so proud and so passionate and so excited and they'll be using anything that they know. It's hard to define what that is, but when you see that in somebody, it just it's an amazing feeling and um, I felt that myself and I love getting to be part of that for these kids feeling that too and their parents because the kids will go home and teach their parents too and they have a strength in their identity and just who they are and what they're doing and a sense of purpose. Our goal is to have people be well and the thing about identity is that when our identity is compromised and our ego is attacked, and our ego is shaped by, by society and things that we see in the media and things that we see on so social media. We have a skewed sense of self just with those external things, right? And so imagine that on top of not having access to what was really intended for you. Any kinds of harvesting or self-sustainable practices that Anishinaabe people historically had, it's, it's really sad. A lot of generations in the past struggled and died and um, really did not have a great time, but they pushed forward this opportunity for us to be here. And it's up to us what we want to do with that. So that's what we're doing here. We're making that decision. We're putting our foot down and we're, we say, I like to use this analogy of it's our canoe. We're getting in that canoe. And we all say, do you have your paddle? Are you ready? I was talk to my immersion students that way. I try to use analogies and things that, that mimic or help connect with cultural, idiomatic type of expressions. And, and uh, that's where we are. I think we're getting in that canoe and we know where we're going. We're ready and we're on that course.